You caused an innocent boy to spend six years in prison. Other people have turned their backs on the wrong that has been committed simply because you're a woman. But I'm here to see that you stand trial. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875. The Carlton Hotel, headquarters of the man called Paladin. Come in. Oh, we saw Paladin? Mm. No. Oh. Hello, hey boy. Oh, you play game Solidaire, huh? Uh-huh. Ah, uh, see. Now, Mr. Paladin, you put up uh, Black Ace. Uh, huh? Oh. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Thank, thank you, hey boy. Black Ace, now, yes. You yeah, make a red six on Black Seven? Oh, hmm. Oh, yes. Uh, 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 what, why, why, what, what's the matter? Over here, like this, see? Hey, uh, boy. Then, uh, make this one here. Yes, I, I see. That. All right, you put him here. Look, look hey. Uh, and then this one. Hey, goes... boy, did you want something? Hmm. How is that, Mr. Paladin? Well, you knocked on the door. I knocked on the... Oh, yes, sir. Uh, this uh, is letter come for you. Oh, thank you. That's my man named Todd Griffin in Tucson, Arizona. He wants to see me. Well, guess I better get ready to leave. Oh, Mr. Paladin, you got to go right away, not even finish nice game of solitude? Well, I... No, no, hey, boy. I had sort of lost interest in it anyway. <laughs> Dandruff bothers most men, most women too. So listen, today you can get rid of embarrassing dandruff in just three minutes. Yes, with Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo, unsightly dandruff's gone in three minutes. It's the quickest, easiest of all leading shampoos. That's not all. Using Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away. Simply apply in the unique Fitch manner. Before you wet hair, rub in one minute. This way, Fitch shampoo penetrates right down to the scalp. Next, add water. Lather one minute to wash every trace of dandruff out of your hair. Then rinse one minute. All that loosened dandruff goes down the drain. In three minutes with Fitch, one rubbing, one lathering, one rinsing, dandruff's gone. And never forget, gentle Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. To get rid of dandruff problems forever, brighten hair too. Use Fitch regularly. Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo today, only 59 cents. It was late afternoon, and I had several miles still ahead of me when a hush fell on the desert. The sky deepened in color, and a thin winter rain started to fall. The dust settled, and the new washed air was clean and spicy with sage. When I reached Tucson, I was soaked through, and I decided I'd better have a warming drink before I checked into the hotel. I stopped at the Cantino, a quiet saloon in the old section. I finished my drink in a hurry, paid for it, and started to leave. Uh, senor? Yeah, I'll see you later, Juano. Uh, un momento, senor Paladin. What? A drink for you. Oh, no, uh, thanks. No, no more, Juano. I've got to find a hotel. But the man at the end of the bar wants to buy this drink for you. End of the bar? Who? Which man? It is the tall man, young, with the light hair. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, all right, one of them. Well, thank you. Don't mention it. Your health. You don't remember me, do you, Paladin? Well, I... Abilene. Curly McLean. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry it's been such a long time. Sure. I'd never forget you. But then I've got something to remember you by. That slug of yours is still in my shoulder. You asked for it. No, I know. And I know it didn't have to land in my shoulder. You could have put it where it would have finished the job. And you'd have been within your rights. You were just a hot-headed kid. And what you really needed was a good spanking. But you didn't leave me any choice. Yeah, I know. Remember what you told me? 
No, what's that? Now, you said if I didn't simmer down and get wise, I'd see the inside of a prison. Uh, you were really going for trouble. I want you to know I took your advice. Oh, glad to hear it. I left Abilene, broke up with the old bunch, came here to Arizona, took a job, worked hard. Well, good. What are you doing now, Curly? I just finished six years in Yuma Territorial Prison. Oh. I've been out just two weeks, five days, and ten hours. I won't ask you any questions, Curly, but just tell me this. Can I give you a hand? Have you any plans? Thanks, no. There's a little matter I have to see to before I settle on anything. And I have a business appointment tomorrow afternoon. Suppose I look you up tomorrow night. We'll talk. Sure. I'll be around. That night and all the next morning, I couldn't seem to get Curly McLean off my mind. When we had our little run-in back there in Abilene, he was a wild one, hell-bent for trouble, but I felt he was a good kid who just needed a little help in the right direction. And I'd tried to give it to him. I thought I'd succeeded. I wondered what had gone wrong along the way. I started early for Todd Griffin's ranch, which was some distance out of town. I inquired for him at the house and was directed to the corrals. Mr. Griffin? Yeah? I'm Paladin. Paladin? Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, breeding stock? Yeah. Brought them in to strengthen my herd. Yeah. Nice layout you have here. Yeah. I figured it's quite a bit to show for the five years I've been in business. I'll tell you why I sent for you, Paladin. I make it a point never to wear a gun, so I'll have to hire one. What makes you think you'll be needing a gun? A man is looking for me to kill me. How do you know this? He made the threat six years ago that he'd kill me the first chance he had. Why have you waited six years to get concerned about it? Yeah, this is the first chance he's had. He'd been behind bars until the week before last. Oh? His name is McLean, a young fellow. I'll show you his picture. If he ain't in town already, he will be soon. You can be sure of that. You want me to protect you from him? Yeah. Do you, do you have any particular plan? <laughs> uh, he ain't very smart. We'll figure something. Mr. Griffin, why did he make this threat? What do you mean? Well, why did he say six years ago that he would kill you the first chance he had? I don't see uh, that's any of your business. No? No. That ain't any of your concern. Why, how, where, or what? For a darn good fee, I'm offering to hire your gun. Now, if you don't want the job, you say so. I'll get somebody else. No. No, I'll take the job, Mr. Griffin. <laughs> Can you imagine the tragedy of a child abandoned to lifelong crippling because there was no one to care for him? This tragedy could happen due to the desperate shortage of medical workers in our country today. Your national foundation, as it expands its fight against crippling diseases to include birth defects and arthritis, as well as polio, is also expanding its historic professional training program. This program aims to help meet shortages of doctors and scientific researchers nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, and medical social workers. But your support of the new March of Dimes is urgently needed to help make this professional education program possible. Your dimes and dollars will help train the hands and minds needed to save lives and rehabilitate the stricken from whatever illness they suffer. January, new March of Dimes month. Give to train medical workers so vitally needed right now. Join the new March of Dimes today. Curly. Hey, Curly, hold up. Oh, Paladin. You're a hard man to locate. I think I've missed you by one hand at every poker game along the street. I like to keep moving. Oh, why? What's on your mind? What do you mean? Are you looking for someone, Curly? Is it any of your business? Yeah. Griffin has hired me to protect him. So that's it. Is he right, Curly? Does he need protection from you? I guess you could say he does, because I'm aiming to kill him first chance I get. Why? I've been saving up a lot of hate. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. 
Why don't you forget this, Curly? Paladin, I ain't going to forget one dirty minute of those six years in Yuma. I can thank Todd Griffin for every one of them, and I'm going to thank him personally with a bullet in his belly. Yeah, but don't forget, I'm working for Griffin. Well, then I guess you and me are going to have to tangle again. We'll have to see how it works out this time. Curly, listen to me. Paladin, you listen to me. I don't want any more of your advice. I followed your advice once, remember? I don't understand. But... All that fine talk you gave me after our little fracas there in Abilene, straighten out, settle down. It didn't work out, Paladin. All right, all right. You want to tell me about it, Curly? Okay. I came to Arizona, took a job, worked hard. I was driving a team for a freight line. It was owned by Todd Griffin. We serviced the mines in Bisbee, carried equipment, supplies, and every once in a while, they'd send the payroll along with us. No guard or anything, just tossed it in. Figured it would be safe that way. Big payroll? Real big. Uh. Big enough for Griffin to set himself up with that cattle spread he's got. What do you mean? One time when the payroll was going in, it never got there. The wagon was found abandoned halfway up the grade. The money was gone. I didn't happen to be driving that night. Griffin, in his report, said I was. Your word against his? Yeah. Wasn't there anyone who could prove you weren't driving? Yeah. The woman I was with. Only she was part of the frame. She swore in court she hadn't seen me. Said I told her I had to work that day. Is that woman still in Bisbee? Last I heard, she was in Phoenix. What's her name? Carrie Porter. Why? I'd like to see her. Maybe she'll tell the truth. Maybe we can reopen the case. Will that give me back the last six years? Will killing Griffin? No. But I'll be pretty sure he won't be enjoying the next six. Curly, will you make a deal? What's that? Will you give me a week? And promise me that you won't make a move for a week? All right, Paladin. I've waited a long time. I can wait another week if that's what you want. But one week, that's the deal. I was working for Todd Griffin, but he said it himself. He was hiring my gun. That was all. So I didn't question the ethics of my plan. When I found Carrie Porter, I realized I had my work cut out for me. She owned the Four Aces Saloon near the outskirts of Phoenix. She had lots of warm red gold hair and hard cold blue eyes. And while it wasn't obvious, I felt sure she had hide like a buffalo. I gave up any notion I might have had of appealing to her better nature. Even if she had one, it was well protected. All right. I can give you a few minutes. What is it you wanted? Uh, could you sit down with me here and let me order you a drink? Look, I got things to do. If you got something to say, say it. If you want to sit around and drink, come in this evening when the crowd's here. Pete? Yeah? Roll in that barrel of beer that's been setting out there in the sun getting hot. Oh. What'd you say your name was? Paladin. Selling something? Nope. What's on your mind? Let's have it fast. Like I say, I'm busy. Uh, this is, this is a nice place. Yeah. I understand you bought it about five years ago. That's right. Mm-hmm. About the same time Todd Griffin went into the cattle business. Exactly. What are you getting at? Oh, it takes quite an investment to open a saloon or to start up a cattle spread. Uh, where'd the money come from? How do you figure that's any of your business? Uh -huh. Just curious. Seems to me very strange to me that more people haven't been curious. I think you'd better get out of here. Maybe it's because people always take the easy way out. Maybe rather than face the truth that a terrible wrong has been committed by society, it's easier to look the other way. Now, see Even here. if it's plain as day that you and Griffin set yourself up with loot from a payroll robbery, it's better to accept it than admit a mistake and face up to the fact that an innocent boy spent six years in prison. All right, Paladin, your time's up. Pete? Yeah, be right over. Just put your gun on the table, Paladin. Pete has you covered, but he won't shoot you. We have another way. Uh -huh. We get nosy people like you in here every once in a while. First, we just warn us. And so far, that's always been enough. I see. Yeah, Miss Carey? Pete's a good bartender, but that ain't why I keep him here. Now, you can try to put up a fight. You look like the kind who will, but believe me, it's no use. All right, Pete. All right, you hurt now. You wait a minute. <laughs> Sinuses. Haven't you heard about Dristan? 
Dristan, the amazing three-layer tablet now bringing real relief from cold misery and sinus congestion to millions. Dristan decongestant tablets not only help drain all eight sinus cavities, critical areas of cold's infection, but circulating through the blood, Dristan's decongestant reaches all congested areas, shrinks all swollen membranes, relieves pressure and pain. An exclusive anti-allergent helps keep breathing passages dry and clear. Pain relievers reduce body aches, fever, and vitamin C helps build body resistance. This is Dristan. Today, Dristan is widely imitated, but the exclusive Dristan formula cannot be duplicated. There's nothing, nothing like Dristan. So for real relief from colds, misery, and sinus congestion, accept only Dristan decongestant tablets. <laughs> Carrie was right on both counts. One, I was the kind who would try to put up a fight. And two, it was no use. When I came to, I was stretched out on the edge of the desert. It was dark. It was raining. Strangely enough, I was quite content just to lie there, which was lucky, because I couldn't move. A long time later, I started to think, and then I got mad. Finally, I was mad enough to find my way back to the Four Aces Saloon. On the way, I picked up a club. The place was closed. Pete was locking the back door. Who's that? Never mind locking that door, Pete. I'm going in. Hey! This is for you. <laughs> now. Take care of it. No, Carrie, it's Paladin. No. What are you doing here? Pete! Pete's resting. What'd you do with him? I hit him with a club. What do you want? A signed confession as to just how you and Griffin framed Curly McLean. You're crazy. How do you plan to get it? Hit me with a club? No, I guess I can't do that. Oh, of course you can't. You're too much of a gentleman. Unfortunately. Then how? Frankly, I don't know. Well, there's no way that you can reach me, Paladin. What are you after? His knife. You broke into my place, and I have every right to kill no, you. No, no, you don't. You just drop, drop that knife. Drop it, drop it. Oh, you get out of here. Yeah. Hey, that, that's quite a knife, Carrie. Razor sharp. Probably a split of hair. Let's see. No. What's the matter? Don't you dare touch my hair. Oh, what do you know? Your vulnerable spot. Everyone has one. What are you talking about? You're very vain about your long red hair, aren't you, Carrie? What if I am? I don't blame you. It's very beautiful. It's the only warm thing about you. Quit shooting off your face and you get out of here. No, I have an idea based on the old truth. There's more than one way to skin a cat. You talk crazy. Carrie, I'm too much of a gentleman to hit you with a club, but I wouldn't hesitate a minute to give you a haircut. Oh, you wouldn't dare. Yes, I would. So let's get busy writing that confession. <laughs> Harry Porter wrote the confession, and I marched her to the marshal's office with it to make sure it would stand up in court. Then I started back to Tucson. I reached there one day, past the week Curly had agreed to give me. He wasn't in town, so I rode out to the Griffin Ranch. I dismounted the gate and searched the grounds. And finally, out by the tool shed, I found the two men. Griffin was cowering against a corner of the building, and Curly stood over him with a gun. Now I'm here, this seems too good for you. You're a sweat. Oh, no, I ain't armed, Curly. It's murder. Curly. What? Stay out of this, Paladin. I gave you your week. Don't do it, Curly. I said stay out. Curly, I'm working for Griffin. You'll have to face me first. All right. If you want it that way. <laughs> Curly. Yeah. You. You ain't learned to shoot any better in all these years. Shoulder again. Yeah, that's the other shoulder this time, Curly. Give you a little balance. You shouldn't have stopped me. Don't worry, Curly. Griffin isn't going to enjoy the next six years. Or maybe the six after that. (laughs) 
Miss Wong. Miss Wong. Miss Wong. Oh, Miss Apollodon, you keep covers up. Uh, you get chilled. Miss Wong, what are you trying to do to me? What do you mean? This, this, this thing. That mustard this, plaster. Yeah. Very good for bad cold. Miss Wong, it's going to burn the hide right off me. Oh, that Chinese mustard. This. Very hot. Very good. I, I can't stand it. Oh, Miss Apollodon, you're very yeah. careless in Arizona. Get this bad cold. Well, I, I was out of the raid. I, I, I... <laughs> Gesundheit. <coughs> Gesundheit? Where do you learn that? Mr. Fisher, room 419, said that. He said it oh. mean next time wear rubbers. Don't oh. get feet wet. Oh, he did. He did. did, he, did he? Mm. Well, he... 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 he. <laughs> Gesundheit, Mr. Pallada. <laughs> Exclusive filter blend. Light, flavorful tobaccos, specially selected and specially processed for filter smoking. Filter blend. That's why it's fun to smoke Winston, America's best selling filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. Gun Will Trouble. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Parrott and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hey Boy and Virginia Gregg as Miss Wong. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Ann Dowd. Featured in the cast were Lynn Allen, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, and Sam Edwards. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs>